Hey guys, welcome to Never a Dull Moment, and today we're going to talk about like, what is a nice knife. Hey guys, listen, today on Never a Dull Moment, we're going to talk about what is a nice knife. You know, I'm sure some of you have amazing knives in your home. I mean, some of you are knife collectors yourself. Some of you might not know what we call a nice knife. And the knife that you have is amazing to you. And that's not wrong. What I have is some examples of the many different styles of knives out there. We're going to talk about them real quick and what makes them a little nicer than the other. Um, I think for most of us, as long as it's sharp, it does the job. But if you really don't have a chance to compare the differences of the knives, you might not understand that this tool should be comfortable in your hand and it should work easily and it should keep its edge for a long time. So let's talk about the different qualities of knife. So first off, this is a knife I got. It is a KitchenAid brand knife. I'm not gonna say anything about it. This was a $12 knife that I got at TJ Maxx. It probably normally sells for more than that. I learned how to sharpen a knife on this knife and I've honestly got it to an amazing edge. So if you keep watching this channel, Maybe watch one of my movies. I'll put it up in the, in the link area. And you can check that out on sharpening on a budget. You can learn how to sharpen your knife and make one of these $12 knives into an amazing knife. I'm sure a lot of you in your home probably are familiar with this knife. This is the second most popular knife in America. I'm not sure about the world. I'll find out. But this is called a Santoku. So this shape is something that a lot of children can handle. I know women can. Um, people enjoy this knife because it doesn't really have an edge that's way out in front of them. They feel like they have a little bit more control. And honestly, this knife is a great knife. Once again, I put a great edge on it. But I think what you'll find if you compare it to the other knives that are a little more expensive, um, what you're going to find is, is the quality of the metal that's in it, the simple metallurgy of the knife, the molecular structure does not allow this knife to get to a certain level of sharpness and it does not allow the knife to keep the edge that you work so hard to get. It will lose its edge rapidly. Now, most of us in a kitchen, we're not professional chefs. We are at home and we cut up things randomly it would be nice to put a new edge on it. It is something, a, a skill that I teach in other videos. So if you wanted to make the investment of a $12 knife or a $20 knife, absolutely. If you just think it feels comfortable in your hand, why not? Um, let's look a little bit beyond that. You know, there's a company called Hinkle. There's another one called Wusthof. They're a German company. There's a French company called Sabatier. Um, you might have heard of it but they make knives that are a little bit more on the dollar amount. And what happens is it is a production knife, but the quality of the steel is a little better. So the molecular structure of the steel is allowed to get a slightly sharper edge than what you're gonna see here. It's gonna have a little bit more durability. Now in other videos, we'll talk about the hardness of the metal, but it does have a lot to do with the performance of the knife. And so, on an inexpensive knife, you're going to find that to you and I, it's hard, right? It's steel. Um, but the, the actual way that it's treated, the, some processes they do, one's called heat treatment, between the quality of the metal and the way it's heat treated, it has a lot to do with how tough the knife is and how long the edge is sustained and how sharp you can get the knife. Another thing you might find on inexpensive materials is the quality of, say, the handle, um, in this case, that has some great wood feeling to it. This one has more of a rubber handle. It's kind of non-stick. Non and honestly, it's held the test of time. This Hinkle and Wusthof, I mean, I've got an entire knife set of them. I think I've had them for 20 years. And they've been sharpened lots of times. They've really been through it. But I don't think that I've ever gotten them as sharp as some of the other knives I'm going to show you. Now... I'm going to jump into the next dollar amount. 
let me stay with Hinkle and stuff for a second. You'll see most of the time in say Bed Bath & Beyond or certain kitchen stores, this is a common company. It is an upgrade to some of the lower end knives that we see in stores like TJ Maxx or um, some inexpensive kitchen stores. So this is an upgrade. We see it all the time. It is a popular, nothing wrong with that. A lot of times you can get a good deal on a big knife block. Um, in one of my later videos, you'll hear me talk about knife blocks and the pros and cons of that as well. But if you want to jump into something a, that's a little bit more, um, we're going to move over to, it was my first Japanese knife and the company is called Shun. Now Shun, makes a really hard knife and one of the complaints might be that when it got harder it got more brittle you will not see the flexibility in this knife that you would see in a german knife so if you think about it if the metal is softer it has more flex so it makes it kind of a tough knife the problem is that the softer knife of course loses the edge more rapidly and you have to put it back the harder knife retains its edge longer. The harder knife can be cut really thin to act more like a scalpel. Makes it really easy to slice through your food. Um, but a harder edge could chip. Instead of having flex, it doesn't have any give. So the knife could actually chip. Now, I have never had one of my Shun knives chip. I have seen them in there. And so when a metal piece is missing, then Work has to be done, but again, I've had these Shun knives. This is another Shun. This is a little bit of an upgrade you can see in the handle. Um, so you've got differences even in just the handle shape, the quality of the wood that's used. So a little bit more comfort. The steel that's used is a very good, uh, very good stainless steel. You do not have to worry about like rust, things that might collect on the knife. The edge is very hard. It gets to a really nice sharp edge and it holds this edge for a long time. Okay. And there are some other companies that compete with Shun. This is an Enzo. You can find this on Cutlery and more. Um, this particular one is, it's a, it's a, it's a version of a chef knife. It actually has its own name called a Kritsuke and it has a little bit of a, a different shape on the end. This K tip it's referred to is for uh, being able to cut things with a finer tip, maybe like a shallot, you know, things that are small. But other than the shape being different there, the type of metal is just an upgrade to the lower. It allows you to make a much thinner edge and, and, and it'll hold its edge for a long time. So this knife, I think I got for like $75. The, these knives were maybe 75 to 100. This one was definitely under 100. So even though it has the nice handle, it is a paring knife, it is a much smaller one. I have a chef knife by Shun with a plastic handle, full tang. If you don't know this vocabulary, we have that in another video. And the chef knife I got for $80 and it's an amazing chef knife. Again, VG10 steel, very good steel. So the quality of the steel got better. The quality of steel as it got better, got harder, which made us able to get a sharper edge, a finer edge. And then we've moved from tough, flexible metal over to something that could be chipped. So there are some rules with that as far as like not cutting frozen food or working on bone. It's, it's just one of those things that can be detrimental. But again, cutting food is so much easier when you upgrade the knife. So now we'll go over here to the higher end. Now, like everything in life, you have your, you know, your nice little sedans, you upgrade a little bit to your Hondas. You get over here and you start to get into the BMW area and then you leave BMW and you get up into the much higher, like, Porsche, you know, we're not, I mean, definitely have some Ferraris. Um, so, you know, these knives are really, really, really thin. I don't even know if you can actually pick up how thin that is on the camera. 
see if I can get that in there. So this particular type of steel far exceeds literally light ear jump from what we have over here. This one is super blue. There is Japanese words for that, but the English word would be super blue. It is a carbon steel knife. This has incredible edge retention. This has the ability to get super sharp. And what I mean by that is at a molecular level, the grains of the, of the molecules are so small and can be compressed to such a tight form that there's really hardly any carbides, which are imperfections. And that allows the grain structure to make just that we get a super clean edge without trying to get crazy technical. So we're able to put a sharp edge on it, keep a sharp edge on it for a long time. It's actually very easy to sharpen. This particular one has a decorative pattern. It is cladded, which means it is protected on the outside with a softer metal. Only the edge that sticks out is carbon steel. That edge can get to a much higher sharpness than anything we have over here. It really makes work so much easier. This particular one is outfitted with a custom made handle that obviously price goes up a little bit for the decoration. Um, you will see, you know, on some of these other knives, this is also a super blue knife, um, which means that the steel in this knife and this are the same. This, these two particular knives are made by the actual same blacksmith. And these are handmade artisan knives. So you have left the world of production factory stamped knives, which are still, they can do their purpose, to someone making something by hand. So it's artistic, it's a tool, it is a cutting instrument for culinary reasons. It is something to be appreciated and yet it still function at the highest level. So we can use the term Ferrari. I'm going to start getting passionate right now because these are amazing instruments. Um, when we, again, I'm a fan of super blue. This one is blue number two. It is another blue steel. Um, we're not going to get into the, the types of steel in this video. We'll do it in another. But just know as we move across into Swedish steel and white steel number two and so on, that we have really made an upgrade. And the different steels that are on this side have the ability to get to a sharpness that you're just not used to. <clears throat> so when we, when we see, I mean, just, just taking the tip, you know, I mean, it should be, something and to fold this magazine paper in half to not crease it and for it to just catch okay so well i need to sharpen that one for it to just catch oh yeah it'll take my own fingers off yeah um so we'll definitely sharpen that one later that was fun uh I actually did this de demonstration the other day and, and I'm healing. Um, you can see that just catches. Let's see uh, real quick if I have any. <clears throat> it's always fun to just cut up something that's actually not paper. So, I mean, you really just, you know, the effort you know, I mean, I'm just not having to push, you know, I'm just, I'm just not, you know, like super, 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 super thin. And again, you can't get things this thin that's see-through with the bulky edge of some of these other ones. And you just can't make a knife, get a thin edge without quality steel. Okay, so the performance of these knives is so much more. They do come with a price. Um, these knives will be with you for 20 years. These knives will be knives that you give to your children. They will be knives that you give to your grandchildren. They will perform at an, a level you're just not familiar with. So the title of this video was, What is a Nice Knife? 
I'm going to let you decide what's nice enough for you. I don't think there's a wrong answer. Um, no matter what you get, please join us in another video. Let us teach you how to take care of it. Let us teach you how to make it sharp again. Let us teach you how to store it so it stays sharp. And we're going to have knife skill videos to teach you how to use the knives. I appreciate you taking the time to tolerate me going through all this. I hope I'm some use. Please, if you find value in these videos, subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Tell us that we're doing something right. And we not only appreciate you, but as always, we're wishing you never a dull moment. Thank you.